Scientists study mantle convection, or the flow of hot rock in the Earth's deep interior, in order to better understand how this flow shapes the surface of the Earth. On a human time scale, the Earth seems static, but on geologic time, its surface is continually changing. Over millions of years, continents have broken up, drifted apart, and then drifted back together, reconfiguring themselves over and over again. These dramatic changes happen because of the nature of the rocks that make up the Earth. Rocks seem solid to us, but over very long time periods, rocks flow. But what drives the movement of the continents and the earthquakes and volcanoes associated with these movements? The answer can be found below the surface of the Earth in the mantle. The continents and the ocean floor are arranged in plates that sit on top of the mantle. Heat within the mantle causes it to flow in a process called convection, and this flow drives the movement of the plates above. The plates break apart at mid-ocean ridges and sink into the mantle at subduction zones. Hot mantle close to the core rises in columns to the surface, forming hot spots. The heat that drives mantle convection is a combination of heat left over from the formation of the planet, tidal forces, and heat from the radioactive decay of rocks in the mantle. We can't observe mantle convection because it happens over time scales much greater than our own lifetimes, so scientists build computer models to better understand how this flow shapes the surface of the Earth. Scientists like Peter Bunga of the Los Alamos National Laboratory build computer models to help understand how flow in the mantle drives plate tectonics. Dr. Bunga lays a three-dimensional grid throughout the volume of the entire mantle. The grid is made up of 10 million grid cells. Each cell is assigned a set of properties that change as the model runs. The main properties that vary in this model are velocity, pressure, and temperature. The properties of one cell are related to the properties of all its neighboring cells in a set of equations based on the laws of physics. Simulating the behavior of the Earth's mantle requires powerful computers that solve the model equations over and over again for each of the variable properties. This is necessary because as the properties of each cell change with time, so do the properties of all its neighboring cells. To simulate 1 billion years, the computer makes 10 billion calculations, which takes 7 days of computer time. To analyze the simulation output data, scientists create visualizations using color and graphics to represent the different variable fields in space and time. At the Earth's surface, we see whole continents moving around. There have been many theories on how that can happen. This computer model, by showing us the motions in the Earth's mantle, is actually letting us find out which theories are right and which are wrong. We now think we understand this. A model is actually really a great toy, a place where you can play and have your ideas moving around. And uh, one of the things that really was important about this model is letting a number of our ideas play around and seeing what they will change, what will happen. Um, so what we did here was really to see if a certain range of hypotheses about the Earth's interior, the strings of rocks inside of the Earth, would make a difference in the model or not. What we find is, yes, they do. So here we're looking at the surface of the Earth and we're beginning our voyage into the interior. Cold temperatures are described by cold colors, that is blue. Warm temperatures are described by warm colors, that is red. Now we're rotating the model, so you really see a structure in 3D. Watch these very large regions in which there are really no cold rocks and then other regions in which the cold rocks form lines. Now that we're moving deeper and deeper inside, we're seeing that the warm regions are connected almost in a column faction to the deep interior. You could almost think of these as like the hot spots under Hawaii or the hot spots under Iceland. Now we bring in an extra isosurface to show again the cold structure of the surface, but the isosurface is transparent. And now we're coming back again. That's all still one moment in time. Now you take a model and you play around saying, well, what could it be? One of the parameters that I let constant was the viscosity. So viscosity really is the ease with which an object can deform. Viscosity closer up to the surface and viscosity deep inside was the same for rocks. So I call it an isoviscous model. What you see first is that the cold rocks from the surface don't want to fall into the interior along lines, similar to subduction zones, but they want to fall into the interior along points. 
you also see that these points are very close next to each other. And that flies in the face of observation, where we see that subduction zones can be away many, many thousands of kilometers. That tells me that the Earth cannot be as simple as the simple reference model. So I've decided to change a parameter. And the parameter that I've changed was to choose a stronger viscosity, a higher viscosity, a larger strength of rocks deeper in the inside. And that's what we're seeing in the model, which the viscosity is increasing with depth the layered viscosity model. What you see is that hot stuff is rising at the center. Remember, convection means that hot stuff is rising and cold stuff is thinking. You also see that there is a subduction zone on the side where cold stuff is falling into the interior. You see how it really becomes very strong right now. You also see again that hot stuff is rising on the other side. So convection really tries to cycle the deep interior up to the surface and the cold surface back into the interior. So something that made sense from other observations also now started to make sense within the model. The reason why the model helps us to understand plate tectonics better is because now all of a sudden it tries to understand plate tectonics together with the deep earth interior. And it's the system together which really moves self-consistently. The model allows really to understand what drives plate tectonics as opposed to just knowing that plates do move. When we compare the two models side by side, the model that is isoviscous has subduction zones that form along points and they're very close to each other. This model wishes to change rapidly and it chooses different structures all the time. They evolve rapidly, they change rapidly. That's not very much in agreement what we know how the Earth has evolved over time. The layered viscosity model has lines of rocks falling into the interior, and they are far spaced apart. We find that it produces a relatively stable and smooth evolution. That's in line with a lot of observation that we have for the Earth. I can now ask new questions and see what I need to change in the model.